Happy Random Acts of Kindness Day. Well, sure, just like you don't need Valentine's Day to tell somebody you love them. We don't need a day to do random acts of kindness, but why not use that as a catalyst? Welcome to Happiness is Courage, where we explore what's really behind the amazing work experiences that lead to functional, sustainable organizational excellence. I'm your host, Sarah Radican, and I'm thrilled and grateful that you've joined me for this journey. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Sarah Radican with Happiness is Courage. And depending on how your social media algorithms are put together, you may or may not be aware that today, February 17th, 2021, is Random Acts of Kindness Day. I'm fortunate enough to be on the mailing list for the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation, and so I get a regular reminder that this day is coming around. The truth of the matter is, I have a calendar on my wall that tells me about this, and gratitude and kindness are part of my daily routines. So what is kindness? Kindness is described by the dictionary as the act of being helpful, sympathetic, generous, or considerate. And random acts of kindness are engaging in activities that fit these criteria. Now you may be familiar with such viral random acts of kindness as long lines of people at a drive-thru paying for the person's coffee behind them. That's pretty cool. Or we've seen individuals doing uh, drives where they collect small toiletries and bottles of water and warm socks, and they create little bundles for the homeless population in their area. That's also a really kind activity. But it doesn't have to be something that costs money. And I think that's a common misperception when it comes to kindness. Remember, helpful, sympathetic, generous, and considerate don't necessarily mean financially. They can, and if you're in a position to do that, that's awesome. But be intentional about it. So rather than buying the coffee for the person behind you in line, maybe consider dropping a $5 bill in the tip bucket for the baristas or the waitresses who are only making two bucks an hour as it is. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an actually random act of kindness for it to be incredibly powerful in the life of the person who is on the receiving end of that activity. And I've been challenged on this. Well, then why do you call it a random act of kindness? Well, I don't. I didn't come up with it. But the intention behind it is that the recipient has no idea that it's happening and there is no intention for reciprocity. I don't do these acts because I expect somebody then to buy my coffee in the next line that I get in. But rather, I engage in acts of kindness because they make people's lives a little bit better. Sometimes they make people's lives a lot better. We have no idea what's going on in somebody's life. I don't care how well you know somebody. There are always things happening that people choose not to share. Maybe the Maybe the situation's too tender, too new, they haven't fully processed it, there's a lot of shame wrapped around whatever's going on in their world, and they're just not ready or willing to put it out there. But that random act of kindness, that moment of joy, that little bit of gratitude that they experience in that moment can be life-altering. It might just be a momentary blip of positivity in their world, and that's still a really amazing thing. I think we have this weird tendency in our culture to believe that unless we transform somebody's life, it's not worth doing. But think about it. In aggregate, over the course of a lifetime, if you experience many, many positive moments, those are actually more sustainable. They can create meaningful change in both people and cultures. And they tend to be a little bit more approachable than the really big stuff. Now, again, if you're in a position to donate a million dollars to your local school, by all means, go forth and do. But if you aren't, remember that you are still capable of engaging in acts of kindness that will change people's lives, even in just that moment. So what does it look like to do acts of kindness? If you're not buying somebody's coffee and you're not donating a million dollars to the local elementary school, then what are you doing? Well, there are lots of ways to engage in kindness, and it depends on who you are and what you're doing in your world. I live in a part of the country that received quite a bit of snowfall, and so after excavating my home and vehicles from the snowpocalypse, we went ahead and shoveled the sidewalk in the driveway of the elderly woman who lives next door to us 
kind of what we do every time it snows actually we take it upon ourselves to shovel out her her walk and her driveway also it makes me feel good and it certainly helps her out and it helps us form a connection so there are two things here I want to unpack a little bit one is I said it makes me feel good Recently, I was in a conversation with a friend who admitted that they are uncomfortable with expressing gratitude to other people or engaging in acts of kindness because they feel like they're doing it for the wrong reason. And the reason that they articulated was it made them feel good. Now, I appreciate not wanting to be manipulative. That's cool. But our brains evolved to reward us for doing the right thing. And acting with kindness towards the people in our lives and in our communities is a good thing. Getting a little shot of dopamine or oxytocin for doing the right thing is just your body's way of saying, good job, keep doing that. I don't know where this idea came about that we shouldn't feel good about doing nice things for other people, but it's hogwash and we need to ditch that that idea. It's not true. Perfectly fine to feel good about doing good stuff. In fact, it's preferable and it's more likely you'll keep doing it if it's something that you actually enjoy. And I just think it's so fascinating that people are uncomfortable with the fact that it can be a planned activity. Uh, I don't know about your life. My life is pretty busy typically. And it's nice to have built in opportunities for joy and happiness, both giving and receiving in my life. So if it takes putting on my calendar that I'm going to do an act of kindness on Thursday at two o'clock or whatever, that's perfectly fine. And speaking of calendars, the folks at the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation have created a calendar, which has hundreds of ideas of ways that you can engage with kindness, both in your personal life, your professional life and your communities. Now, speaking of professional lives, kindness in the workplace can often be seen as an uncomfortable topic much like its near cousin, gratitude. I've seen managers say things like, I can't be kind to people, it'll spoil them, they'll get lazy. And I, don't, I know where this concept came from, I study management theory, uh, but it's false. The data does not support that, that perspective at all. In fact, we know that employees who feel appreciated and who work in kind environments actually perform better. There is this bizarre sense that we have to toughen people up and that just doesn't play out. So as a leader, if you're struggling to embrace kindness towards your people, that's probably something you should hire a coach or something to work on because whether or not you personally have a well-developed sense of empathy, from a fiduciary perspective, your people will perform better. They will work better, They'll have higher productivity, higher sales, higher innovation levels. They have lower health care costs, which comes out of the company's operating budget. They tend to stick around longer. They're far less likely to actively sabotage and steal your intellectual property, which are forms of extreme disengagement. And the general environment where your people work will be more positive, which is good for acquiring top-notch talent. So until you grow your empathy muscles to a level that's a little more comfortable, think about it from just the financial perspective. Kindness at work absolutely has a place in your business model. And at the end of the day, what it boils down to is that kindness helps us connect to other people. Kindness and gratitude are really two sides of the same coin. In one aspect, we are performing acts of kindness. We're doing nice things for other people. And that feels pretty good for most of us, even if we feel weird about the fact that it feels good. Being on the receiving end of that can be a little bit uncomfortable, or in some cases, extremely uncomfortable for people. I encourage you to think about the fact that this is a cycle. Doers need receivers and vice versa. And it's not uncommon for us at many seasons of our life to be switching back and forth between these two roles all the time. And in fact, even when we are in positions of extreme trauma or significant grief or other challenges, we can still have, can still have the capacity to engage in positive thinking, positive interactions. So don't count somebody out. Don't make assumptions about somebody else's capacity for engaging in kindness based on your perception of their world. You don't know. 
I would encourage people to check out the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation, randomactsofkindness.org, where you can find oodles and oodles and oodles of resources. They have uh, the science behind how all of this stuff actually works for nerds like me who like to put the pieces together in a more scientific fashion. They have resources for individuals, for families, uh, for schools, and for workplaces. So there are a couple of different ways to think about how this can play out in your life. And you can get on their mailing list, so next year you can get the cool postcard too. So go forth and be kind on this National Random Acts of Kindness Day. You never know what kind of a difference you're going to make in somebody else's life, but it's guaranteed to be a good one.